Welcome to SCAL 6, My Favorite Things, Part 1 Overview. I decided to make this series of videos because someone was asking me about why, why do I like SCAL 6 so much? And um, I realized that I couldn't answer that, you know, in one or two paragraphs. I would need a lot to explain it. So I thought, you know what, why don't I make videos and then I can cover all of these favorite things. And at the same time, you can learn how to use them. So, um, so that's what I'm basically going to do. Now, one thing I want to kind of make clear is that, you know, I realize that a lot of the things that are my favorite things are available in other programs. I've have experience with about seven other vector programs. And what the what makes SCAL stand out for me is that the, some of the very favorite things I like these other programs, like there might be something in program X, but it's not in program Y, or it would be something in program Z that's not in program W. You know what I mean? And so what I realized is that after you know, using all these various programs over the years, I ended up coming back to SCAL 6 and going, or coming back to SCAL, because there's I've been with using SCAL back since um, uh, version 3, was that it has the, all the things I really need. And some of the things I like in Scout are deal breakers for me. I can't use another program because now that I've had experience with a particular function, I need that function. You know what I mean? I don't want to go backwards. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get started now. So the first thing is that it's not cloud-based. I don't want a cloud-based program. I want a program that's running on my computer so that I don't have to worry about, you know, if the internet goes out that I can't use the software, okay? That's that's an important one to me. Um, the other one is that it's not subscription software. I'm very much opposed to subscription software. I think you end up paying way too much for the program. And uh, I like the way, you know, SCAL works in the sense that they're, um, you know, he'll come out with a version. Like, for example, he came out with SCAL 3 way back whenever, uh, years ago. Um, and then about every four years, there is a major version change. And you do have to pay extra, but that extra is always like around $30 to $35, you know, for the regular version, which is not bad. Um, especially when up front, you're only paying like around, well, it depends on where you buy SCAL, but, you know, you can get it for as low as $47, you know, USD. Um, so when you look at it, you know, when you break it down dollars per month, it ends up being like a, a dollar a month, you know, compared to the subscription software which is you know substantially more and also th the thing I like about that is that you're not forced to update you know for example there are people who are still using shortcuts a lot version 3 so you know yay um, and then you know and people still using you know scal 4 and still people still using scal 5 so you don't have to they, they keep working now up to a point now Mac on Macs they keep updating their operating system and when they operated updated it to suddenly be you had to have a 64-bit program well then yeah people had to update their, their SCAL to uh, SCAL 5 in order to have the 64-bit support. But with Windows, I know people, Windows versions that are using really old versions, even going back to SCAL 2. And, uh, you know, no problems with Windows 11, which is really great. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, even though, you know, the version updates, you know, are every four years you pay for them, in between then, the developer is still will add new things and he will be fixing all the bugs that come up. And for example, with uh, SCAL 5, I know that by the time from in the four and a half years that SCAL 5 was the one that was being sold, there were like 94 updates or something like that, well, maybe 74 updates. But that, that shows that he's paying attention to things that get reported to him and as well as coming up with, you know, ideas like, oh, you know what, I get easily add this little thing and that would you know make this section of customers happy so I really like the attitude that developers had about making sure new things are added another feature that helps me almost daily in my work but also has really helped a lot of people who have older cutters and bought new cutters or they're looking to buy a new cutter or whatever is that your cuts a lot supports uh, many different brands and models of cutters um, it does not support Cricut or Brother because those two companies do not legally allow third-party software programs to work however most other cutter brands, they're fine with it. In fact, they encourage it. They like it. Um, and certainly, I certainly do like it. So, and it's very easy to switch to. It's not a big hassle like with some pro programs where you have to, you know, go the hassle of uninstalling. In Shakats Lot, you just go to Cutter, My Cutter, Manage Cutters. And this is, over here are the ones that I currently have installed. And the only thing you have to do to add one is just select the brand. And let's say I was going to add a graph tech. I'll just come down and select graph tech. And then from this menu, I can select whatever model. Let's say it's a 3000. And then you click on add to list and you click on done. And then 
there you go. Now then it switched over here to Graph Tech Craft Robo. That's now the current cutter. For example, if I go to the cutter window, that's the one that's now selected. However, I can easily just, you know, decide, well, you know what? No, I want to come over here and I want to go back to cutting to, let's say, my StarCraft Solo or whatever. So uh, very simple. The other thing that um, has been asked several times is can you cut to more than one cutter at one time from sure cuts a lot and you can what you can do is um, down here on the taskbar you just right click on that uh, your you know your scal six icon and you select your cuts a lot six and then what it does it opens what's called another instance of the program so the program is open twice so when you do that then what you can do is you can you know set up one program whatever and I'll come back over here and let's say let's say I'm going to use my Caesar for this one um, so I've got this one set up and I you know set my program or my file and I come here you know and I've got my connection I go ahead and click on cut all right and then and meanwhile, I can come back over to the other instance, the first instance, all right, <clears throat> and do the same thing, have the same file or a different file, whatever I want, and then go to cutter. And meanwhile, my, you know, my, my Caesar cutter is still over there cutting. Then I can set this one up, you know, and change the, you know, the connection and port to whatever I'm using for that particular, you know, cutter, and then send that project to cut. So that is something, again, a lot of software programs can't do that uh, for more than one reason. One, they just won't support opening another instance. And in other cases, you can't have two different, uh, you know, cutter brands installed at the same time with the software. So another deal breaker, not just for me, but for actually a lot of users, is the ability to export as SVG file so that you can share it with others or move it to a different program or whatever it is you want to do. And of course, that's definitely possible. Um, but I also wanted to cover just how, much, how many other file formats you can work with um, in the software. So if you go to File, Place, Image, this is how you would bring in a raster uh, image. And you can see in this drop-down menu that these are the ones it supports. You know, there's uh, you know five different uh, raster files formats and of course the two biggies JPEG and PNG are there. Now then you'll notice that the PNG is here and now the PNG file if it has a transparent background then instead of using file place image you probably want to use file import because when you do that then it brings in um, the the cut lines it automatically places the cut lines wherever the transparency of you know, matches up with the initial pixels of the of the design. So, so you have two ways you can bring in a PNG file. But also under this file import, you'll see all these other formats. This is where all of the the uh, the vector formats are located. I wanted to point out, of course, PDF is there. That's a, a fairly common one. Same, so is EPS and AI, and of course the SVG. But the ones that are sort of um, kind of stand out as being different from other programs. Um, are the MTC, which is the Make the Cut files. This is the only program I'm aware of besides the original Make the Cut, which is now Abandonware, that can bring in these files. And there are so many users out there. You have no idea how many crafters use Make the Cut. And so now then they can, you know, bring in their MTC files into um, your cuts a lot, as well as uh, the people who uh, do embroidery. There's all the embroidery formats. There's like 10 different embroidery formats that are available here. There's also WPC, which is what the Pazzles uh, users, the Pazzle owners, what they always use with their software, which is for WinPC sign. And, um, and, uh, let's see. There's also for the brother, you can bring in uh, the brother files, which are they were the they those are the FCM files, which are right there, scan and cut FCM files. So lots of options for you. I uh, that, think that's uh, and of course GSD that those have been around a long time. So and then for exporting, uh, let's just grab something from the library here. Just grab one of the. I'll do one for my friend Sandra, one of her designs. Let's just bring it in. If you wanted to export this, then your options are, let's go to File, Export. And then select from the drop down menu. You'll see that uh, you have several different uh, raster formats bitmap, JPEG, PNG, TIFF. You can also export, of course, this SVG. That's the biggie that you're looking for. And also, you know, if you have a brother uh, cutter and you want to be able to cut from Canvas, that software, then you can export as an FCM file. Again, brother doesn't allow SCAL to cut directly to one of their cutters but you can export the design in their file format and open it. And then finally, also PDF. So uh, lots of good options there. So Scal, like most of uh, other cutting programs, allows you to have multiple files open at one time. For example, I've got three open right here, and then I can click on New Project to open you know, another one and so forth. 
But one of the things that I, you don't find in all of the programs, and it's something that once I got used to having it, it's, a, it's one of those deal breaker things. I can't live without it. And that is being able to have multiple pages within a single file. And I got into the habit of kind of designing in a particular way. So for example, um, here is like a final card design that I set up. This would be the outside of the card. And this would be the inside of the card. But what I like about the pages is that I start with the, my first page. I start, I call it raw. And I, I rename it actually raw every time. And what I do on this page is I import all the clip art and various vector files and maybe, you know, type out some text and stuff of things that I plan to use. And sometimes I might have three or four different fonts that I've tested out here. And I don't do anything to this text. All right. I leave it. And same thing for all these you know, various things that I import. I just leave them exactly as they are because I can then draw from it. It's kind of like having like a little data bank or a little library of stuff that I can grab as I want to use it while I'm designing. And more, most importantly about the, the text is that the text well, as long as I don't do anything to it, it'll keep the name of that font. Even if I, you know, have temporarily installed a font and then I close it, when I reopen it, then it's going to pop up and tell me what font it's looking for. Or if it's a font that I keep installed, but I don't remember the name of it, well, then I'll be able to um, find out what it is. Well, one way to do it, you can go to Window, uh, Project Info. Okay, and then over here on the fonts tab, it'll tell me the name of that font that was used on this page. And if there were more than one font, they would list all of those fonts uh, right here. So that way I could find out which font I used. And then I usually have another page within the project that I use. I call it designing. That's where I start playing around with things and experimenting and determining, you know, what it is that I'm going to use. And of course, I already showed you this in the final card design. And then I like to have one page that's just everything that I'm going to print and cut, you know, all, all of those, you know, whatever that's going to be. I have that on one page. And of course, I can have all of these in one page and just show and hide groups or whatever I needed to. But once I got, again, once I got used to having the pages, I just found it so much easier to keep my projects organized. And if I like needed to go back and recut something, well then, you know, I've got a page already set up ready to do that. And so then I have more like here's all my red designs and here's the records that I needed to cut out of both cardstock and black vinyl. So, um, so anyway, so that's just, uh, again, something that I really like having available to me. The preview function, which is located right up here at the top, is a really important uh, function to get in the habit of using before you cut, especially in print and cut projects, and I'll show you why. So I designed this, and these are supposed to be stickers that are on kind of like a background, um, <clears throat> you know, page or something that you would then, you know, be selling. So uh, the way it works is that I would want to cut, just kind of kiss cut around the, each one of these stickers and then fully cut all the way around the outside or perf cut as it's uh, commonly called. So when I use the preview button and I click on it and I look at it, now this is the first mistake that people make when using this uh, window. They'll open it up and they'll go, yeah, it looks good. Well, the, what you want to do, you, you don't want to have all four of these marked off. Okay. First of all, I don't want, I don't need any draw lines in this particular project. So I turn it off and I go, okay, yeah, nothing disappeared, which is good because <laughs> nothing's supposed to, but I need to also, I'm going to turn off printable and I'm going to show off the score line. So I'm looking at only the cut lines. And when I look at that, I go, well, well, wait a minute, I don't want to cut out the word sea creatures words or, you know, by Mila's designs. That's that's supposed to be print only. So this helped me identify right away that, that I've got a problem here. And then I'll come down and I'll turn on the show score lines and turn off the show cut lines. And I go, yeah, that's correct. That's going to be the, uh, you know, the kiss cut that's done around the clip art. And then I can turn on show printable. And then you can see all of it. And if I turn both of these off, you'll see that I still see the sea creatures and the by Mila's designs, even though it's set to printable, it's going to print also because those particular layers I had left set to cut. So I need to fix that. So I come back over and I grab, you know, I find uh, wherever these, uh, these two layers are, and they happen to be up here at the top, the by Mila, and I'm going to change that to sh print plus cut, uh, print only. And sea creatures, the same thing, print plus cut, print only, because I don't want to cut those out. Then when I come back to preview and I say show cut lines and I turn off show principle or show printable, now I have exactly what I want for my full cut. And I have what I want for my score lines. And then I can look at just the, the printable and say, okay, yes, that looks right for printable. And you'll notice that in this window, if you have a, a shape that you've added like text or you've added a circle or whatever, and it's set to show printable, it's going to show up. Um, is, a, is a black outline just like it shows here. And the last thing that I want to 
cover uh, within this overview video is this uh, is going to the cut settings window. So when you click on cutter and it opens the cut settings window, here are some of the things that I really like about how this window is designed. First of all, it's all here. I can't tell you how annoying it is to me. And some of these are pro vinyl software programs. When you go to, you know, set things up, you have to go to an entirely different function to set up your connection and to test it. You have to go to a different window to set up which cut mode you want to be in, whether you want to be in WYSIWYG or origin point. And by the way, Scale also supports center point, which is something you don't find um, available that often. And that can be very handy in certain circumstances when you want to center your design. Let's say you're engraving and you want to make sure your design is going to be engraved right in the center of that little, you know, rectangular piece of acrylic or whatever. <clears throat> very handy function. But anyway, so, you know, nice having that there. Your use software speed and force is right here available, whether you want to do your settings here or you want to do them on the control panel of your cutter. Um, if I was using a two-headed cutter, a dual-head cutter, then right here I'd be able to pick left or right side that I'd then assign all of the settings to and, you know, which tool I want to use. That would be another line that would be present right here. Um, if you have the pro version of Scal, then it has a series of tabs across here for all the extra features that are available in the pro version. Again, you don't have to hunt and find them. And then, of course, all the settings. One particular program, well, I'll call it Program X because I don't really want to be, <clears throat> you know, disparaging any particular programs, but there's one program X I had to work with. The blade offset and overcut, instead of being in the same window with the other settings, they were off in yet another window that took me forever to track down and find. So it just, uh, things like that annoy me. And then finally, there's also the save to file down here, which is if you're saving it to a PLT file. Now, not all cutters have this ability, but for example, the Juliet and the Solo and the Sky Cuts, they all have the ability to um, load a PLT file directly on the on the machine by plugging in a USB flash drive. And so this is where you would save this entire cut with all of its settings, if you wish, as a separate file. And then of course down here is the print plus cut button, which you click on that and then it takes you through a step-by-step -step procedure for you know setting up for doing the scan of the registration marks. So again, I just really, really like that cut window. So this concludes uh, what I wanted to cover in the overview of my favorite things. Um, I'm going to make some more videos uh, dealing with my favorite things, but I'm going to make them specific to the text features, to print and cut, to editing features, um, some of the properties panels, and then also designing. So thanks so much for viewing, and as always, if you have any questions, do let me know.